Hey everybody, this is JR. I work in Crutchfield and uh, today we're going to do a uh, car stereo installation. Just kind of go over the basics of how to install a car stereo into a car. Well, a truck actually. So we've set the emergency brake and now we of course want to uh, disconnect the negative battery cable. We disconnect the negative battery cable because if our wrench accidentally touches any metal in here. It's, uh, it's already grounded, doesn't cause any sparks or flames or fires or anything like that. And we're disconnected. We'll kind of tuck this out of the way so it can't accidentally reconnect itself. All right, so we're gonna pry out the dash to reveal the radio to get down to the radio. And then in this truck, we've got to take out the piece that goes all the way from here to right here. It's one big piece around the radio. In a lot of cars, it's just one small piece of dash trim that can be pried out. Um, however, in this truck, again, we got to remove this panel here. So I've got a trim panel tool, uh, and I'm going to start prying and getting this panel out. It's a combination of using the tool and your fingers. The tool helps save your fingertips so you don't, you don't end up uh, pulling your fingernails off. That's no fun at all. There we go. All right, looks like the panel's loose. We'll sort of gingerly get it out of the dash here. There's probably going to be some wiring connectors we'll have to disconnect. Squeeze that right there. Got that one. Another one here. All right, get the last wiring connector. Unplugged, I think that should be all of them. And now we should be able to take this entire panel out of the dash. There we go. All right, we've got our dash out. All right, so we've got our dash trim panel off and now we've just got to get the radio out. And uh, this process is fairly similar in most vehicles. There's usually some screws holding it in. It could be a Phillips head or a flat head or a socket of some kind. That's what we've got today uh, is a 930 seconds socket to remove these four screws. And our four screws are out. So now we can pull the radio out of the dash and disconnect it. All right, this is our antenna connection right here. Big harness here and Connect this last harness. We've got our factory radio out of the dash and our dash is now sort of ready for the new radio. So now we'll go into the shop. We'll get our wiring harness all connected and ready to go. And we'll put the radio in the installation kit and we'll come back out here so we can start to put this thing back together. So we have here the harness that came with the radio, the harness that plugs into the vehicle, the vehicle specific plug. We're going to connect these wires to these wires. So I'm going to go ahead and begin connecting these wires. I'll start with the ground wires where I'm going to twist the copper together here. Then I'm going to take my posi connectors. We're doing these instead of soldering just because they are so simple, so easy to install, and it makes a nice tight connection. It's that easy really. So now our ground wires are together and tight and we can move on to our next one. So what's nice so far is that the, uh, the wires on both the vehicle specific harness and the radio's harness have been matched color uh, for function. So our yellow is our constant wire, our black is our ground wire, our red is our switched power wire. Uh, you may have noticed a few extra wires on this harness that we're not addressing or hooking up right now. We'll deal with those later. This green wire is our parking brake wire. We need that because the radio has a screen on it and we're gonna to need to connect it to our parking brake. And if you're, if you're hooking up just more of a traditional receiver that doesn't have a video screen on it, you, you won't have the parking brake wire or the reverse wire on there. So uh, these are extra wires that are for this receiver specifically. So we've finished the harness. We've got the vehicle specific harness connected to the radio harness. We're gonna move on to assembling the installation kit, which is 
the thing that holds the radio in the dash and makes it look good. So we're gonna put the side brackets into the kit. They only fit one way, so you can't put the side on the wrong side. We're gonna put this on the radio. Now we've got some screws to hold the kit to the radio itself. All right, so we've got the kit on the radio and it is ready to go. We've got our wiring harness completely put together. So we're ready to go out to the truck uh, to put the radio and the harness and stuff in the truck. One thing I would like to mention, obviously this is a double din radio, meaning the radio is about four inches tall. It takes up this entire opening in this installation kit. Not every radio is that size. Some radios are a single din or two inches or half that height, such as this radio here. So I brought this out just sort of get a visual on the single din with a pocket versus a double din radio. All right, so we've got, our, we've got our radio and our harness in the truck pretty much ready to go in, but we've got a couple other things to do first. For example, this radio has a USB input on the back of it, and it comes with this nice uh, USB cable uh, that we're going to plug into the back of the radio and route it out to where we can reach it. Uh, and we've also got a Bluetooth microphone to install. Uh, the microphone, will probably put it up here on the visor, so it picks up the caller's uh, or the driver's voice really well and we'll route the cable down uh, and into the dash and into the back of the radio where it plugs in right here. So we need a place to put the USB cable where the driver can reach it easily when he gets in and we found a perfect place in this truck. There's a nice little storage pocket right here and it also happens to give us pretty easy access to the uh, routing it up to get it to plug into the back of the radio. So I'm going to take the plug, uh, we're going to plug it just route it right down in through here, pull it up out of the radio cavity, and we're just going to pull out enough to have some slack to plug it into the back of the radio, and the rest of this cable, we can just sort of fold it up and leave it right in here so that the uh, driver can bring it out when he wants to plug his phone in. All right, so we're going to put the uh, Bluetooth microphone right up here on the visor. Fits nice and snug. And we can aim the Bluetooth microphone right at the driver's face. Uh, really gets the voice projected out of there really well. So you get a nice direct voice uh, pickup on the microphone. Uh, and then this nice thin cable can be routed right up behind the headliner here. Just tuck it, tuck it up in there so it doesn't fall out and it stays nice and hidden. So we've got microphone cable routed right up in here avoiding all the important stuff like the steering linkage and such and our last little bit we're just going to run it through this little hole and into the radio cavity so we ran the usb cable we ran the bluetooth microphone and uh, we've got the radio's harness sort of good to go in the dash there with most receivers that would be all we would we need to do uh, however, this is a video receiver, which means it needs a connection to the parking brake so the video receiver knows when not to play video. And so that parking brake connection is down here. Uh, just a little switch. We tapped into it. Uh, and so pretty, pretty much we're ready to start plugging this thing in. All right, so we're ready to connect the radio and slide it into the dash and test it and make sure everything works. Uh, we'll start with the... Uh, steering wheel control interface right there. That was pretty easy. Uh, next, we will do our Bluetooth microphone, which plugs in right next to that. Let's see. We've got the USB cable that we ran earlier. We can plug that into the USB cable input here. We've got our radio harness. The radio side of that connection goes right into the back of the radio. And last but not least, we have our antenna connection, which is our shortest wire. And the antenna connector is right here on this side of the radio, which is good because, again, that cable is kind of short. All right, so we can go ahead and secure the radio into the dash. Looks like a pretty good fit with our installation kit. The factory screw holes line up nicely. And we can just go ahead and reuse the factory screws to uh, hold it in place. All 
All right, so we've got our radio in, we've got it all connected, and now it's time to put our dash panel back on. And uh, oh, this is why we did the emergency brake, by the way, because sometimes you got to put it in gear to clear room to put your dash panel back on. And you got to bend it just right to get it in there. There we go. And now we can go ahead and make all these connections and hook it up and test it up. All right, this is our last connector. And so now we can go ahead and reconnect the battery and test it and make sure it's all working. Got our battery connected and we can go ahead and test it out. Put the key in the accessory position. All right, let's see if it paired with my phone. Sounds pretty good, but that could be because it's the band. It's Ice House Road, if you haven't heard of them. It's on Spotify. You can't hear it at this part of the song, but they have a great drummer. Here, let's try another song. Yep, there's the drummer. Well, he's very much an outlaw. And he's living the cowboy code. And he's busted a lot of bronze. And his legs are really bow. Yeah, he's very much an outlaw. And he's living the cowboy code. All right, so that's how to install a car stereo. Uh, please like the video, uh, subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more videos like this, because we'd love to keep making them for you. Thanks so much for watching.